This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Volvo C40. Can I turn on this one? I think usually if I turn on the whole, this one, it becomes too much. Yeah, so we want to switch off uh, that one, maybe. Is this good? Is this good? Check here. Yeah, I think that's good. Well, okay, let me try something. If I do this and if I do this, would that be too little light? No, actually, I think that's perfect. We have a little bit of light there. Okay. So, um, yes, it's a C40. It's the coupe version of uh, the coupe version. It's a coupe. No, but it's a coupe version of the, the XC40. I tried the, uh, what was that again? One and a half year ago or something. So, um, they should be quite similar, right? Yeah, kind of, but there are also some differences. For example, the first thing I noticed with this car is that it rides better. And then I have to check out the spec, and it turns out that uh, the suspension is four centimeters lower. You see, when we go on the roundabouts and stuff, and just drive and make some turns, it, it it just feels more planted to the road. It's it doesn't give you that SUV feeling. So I have to say I like the C40 way better than the XC40 because I'm a I'm a sedan type, 
I don't like the SUV boat feeling. So this is right down my alley. So let me see, maybe I should have a checklist of stuff I want to show you, but um, we have 88% battery right now. We should have, yeah, we have okay um, region. So uh, this car has the setting for, okay, I have to break that. This car is a setting for normal or, I mean, high region or normal, well, I think it's called one pedal driving, yeah. Uh, or the, the low region. And I have it set to the one pedal driving. So it, it gives you nice and strong region, almost like one pedal driving, let me see. Uh, but uh, I also noticed, let me see, let me just, okay, I have no car behind, let me just slow down here a bit. You see, it can slow down quite a lot, actually, to a complete stop. Let's go, car, car from behind. But it's also quick, yes. Um, fun fact, the, the C40 is actually faster than Tesla Model Y from zero to 100. And I feel like this car also pulls great even past 100 kilometers per hour. So um, yeah, think about this. Many people nowadays, you associate Teslas with fast, fast cars, but this C40 is faster than a Tesla, huh? Eh? Eh? So, and uh, okay, some complaints then. If I use the auto steer right now, when I want to demonstrate, it might do it well, but, or it might not. But you will see that maybe you don't. Okay, I think the speed is not high enough, but especially when I drive faster in the 110 zone, the steering wheel jerks left and right, left and right, left and right, all the time. And for you guys who are wondering, if I go to system and I go to software update, you can probably not see this, but it says your software is up to date, worse than 1.10. Even with the latest software update, it still does these micro adjustments, left and right, left and right, to the point where I almost get dizzy. Uh, it doesn't happen now because we're only cruising at 90 kilometers per hour on the GPS, I mean, sorry, <coughs> on the speedo, but that's one of the weak points I, I feel like with this car. I mean, see, what about now in the merge? Oh yeah, it tends to also do some weird shit in, in merges, but right now it does it fine. Okay, let me increase my speed a little bit. And then what you hear there is the, the sound of uh, me uh, of bugging me to hold the steering wheel. But also, yes, uh, one other excuse uh, some people come up with that. Oh, but Bjorn, the micro adjustment or the, the steering wheel movement uh, that it does, it's just because you're not turn, touching the steering wheel. No, even when I'm touching the steering wheel all the time, it still does the weird jerky movement. Uh, so it has nothing to do with that. Uh, some people claim that, yeah, but it's, it's, it's trying to do the left and right jerky movement to, to try to feel that you are holding the steering wheel or not. Now that's not how it works. That's not how it works with other cars also. That's, and that's not how it works here. So, um, but okay, so that's a minus. What, what's gonna happen now? Ooh, that, it, that it, did it well. And then when it comes to sound levels, it's a fairly quiet car. It's right down the middle there, and not super quiet, but also not noisy. So uh, uh, I don't remember how it was compared to other cars like Tesla. Many people tend to put this up against Tesla. Um, the price though on this car is a bit high. Um, this press car costs over 600,000. I think it was 620,000. No, <laughs> which is a lot. I wonder if you can get a Tesla Model Y performance for that price. Uh, you can get uh, um, an Ionic 5, which actually has more space. You can get uh, EV6, a Kia EV6. You can get the MEB cars uh, for this price. So, you, if it makes, I mean, does it make any sense to buy this car? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Also, EQA costs also at the same price. Actually, EQA is kind of expensive. Huh. EQA might be around the same price as this one, whereas the other cars I mentioned, they are cheaper. But if I had to choose between the EQA or this one, this by the way is the all-wheel drive version, I would take the C40 any day. So I didn't like the, the XC40 too much. I call it, jokingly, I call it the XC40, it's called the XC40 Recharge, right? But I call it the XC40 Recharge a lot <laughs> because it was so thirsty, but it was winter. And um, wait, did that one have the 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 heat pump? Um, this one has heat pump. I think at one point, uh, also in the beginning, Polestar 2 didn't have heat pump, but then they added heat pump. So yeah, let's uh, get over to the Tesla lane, by the way, which is over here, the rightmost lane. 
So yes, with the heat pump, it seems to improve the, the efficiency. It also, oh, what the that debris? Okay. Improves efficiency, of course, um, so that the, the XC40 was kind of thirsty, actually quite thirsty uh, in winter. It had indication to be even thirstier than the fat e-tron. And then it also colgated, but now they have fixed the software. So we have preheating before fast charging. We have faster and more uh, like very super consistent charging curve. It charges like a boss, hits 150 kilowatt until 30%. Uh, and also the efficiency is, is better with this C version uh, versus the XC. Maybe because we have lower uh, suspension better aerodynamics, also the coupe shape, everything <clears throat> in combination with um, heat pump. So it makes it better. Okay, it's not as efficient as a Tesla, but still uh, compared to other, I wouldn't call it SUV, but other crossover, CUV crossover. And then I think it's pretty good. So uh, you, I mean, there are mainly two types of people in this world. <clears throat> um, no, wait, wait. There are 10 types of people in this world. People who understand binary and people who don't understand binary. <laughs> no, but uh, there are two types of people. There are people who want Tesla, and then there are people who don't want Tesla at all. No matter what, they just don't want Tesla. So for me, uh, if I had the money, I would probably buy a, a Giga Berlin Model Y if I needed something like a, a crossover. But if you don't want a Tesla, then what the heck do you buy then, right? Um, I would strongly suggest this car if you want something Swedish. I mean, it's still Swedish design, even though, yes, it's made in Belgium. But um, it, it's just, um, I feel like this car is a lot better than the XC40 I tried. And also when it comes to headlights, by the way, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the XC40 didn't have any good headlights. Was it just a, or I'm not sure if it had any matrix headlight or was it before I started doing the headlight test? But um, the C40 has, um, they call it pixel light, but technically pixel, that is pixel picture element. I guess it's not a picture element, but we have 84 uh, LED elements in each headlight side thing. And whoa, 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 my, 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 I have to do one next. I found, I forgot. I'm not going to go that way. I have to go around a little bit more, and then go around. I was, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, shit, my bad. I have to go over here. I'm gonna go back to the city. But the pixel headlights, they are freaking awesome. I wonder if this one even beats the Polestar 2 headlights. They have, they, they have a characteristic, characteristics similar to, uh, to the Mercedes EQS. It blocks out dark spots and it can uh, detect up to five vehicles and block them out simultaneously it's like a ninja but you still have the spread and the wideness and the strength and the good the good headlights similar to uh polestar so i really love lots and lots of features in this car and you see uh in the past yes i was kind of making fun of the xc40 it was thirsty it wasn't it wasn't really good it didn't check my boxes but this one does it so it's not like uh, I, I, I'm, I call myself Tesla Bjorn and everything that is not like Tesla, then I don't like it. And I just dislike some brands like, uh, like Polestar or Volvo or Audi or something. No, it's just that if the brand, if the car, if the model I test doesn't take my boxes, in my opinion, on what uh, an EV should be like or a car, but then you know i don't praise it that much but this one does it it preheats before fast charging like a true ev should do it like tesla has been doing it for years and it's not that inefficient anymore at least now in springtime i'm not sure how it's going to be in uh, winter but still and also i like the ride of it it like i said it, it just rides way better let me see can i do a little uh, quick uh, is it uh, kind of political correct to do a quick lane change? Let's try. Okay, let's do. It. You see the moose test. I can do the. I can do the moose test. Like this, right? Okay, let's not do it too much. Otherwise, people are gonna call the police. But okay, I checked that there, I was kind of clear here. But you see, it it doesn't have this SUV feeling. So 
I like it. I like it. The stereo here is top notch, except for well, it's uh, it's the um, uh, Harman Kardon stereo, but um, there's just some kind of weird rattling from the door here, so uh, that ruins the experience really. But the, the stereo sounds great, and the beat, the, the 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 bass is also deep and and good and punchy, but also not too loose. So I I, I like it. Also, the infotainment here is also top notch. We have Google easy to use it has some weird glitches from here there they have some weird um, uh, yeah like when when you are fast charging you're you're at a, a high power charger and you have low state of charge when you have below 10 percent well okay let me let me explain this first um, when you drive and the battery reaches 20 percent you get a warning of low battery and then when you reach 10 percent you get another warning about the, the second warning of low battery but then when you charge up the car again and you go on the way up past the 10 percent threshold you also get a warning about low battery and then you click it away you were like what the heck is that shit and then when you charge up to 20 percent you get another warning of low battery <laughs> so that's like a i guess it's a glitch they they um yeah they should fix it kind of with weird feeling about like uh, did they really spend that much time uh, developing this car or what but on the other hand I still feel like this car is well done they 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 went I mean they went to at least implement uh, uh, to in my opinion well desired EV features uh, and also yeah like you have uh, the button for when you leave the car, you can uh, press it to heat, keep the, car, the climate on for half an hour. So this car, oh yeah, and also when you navigate somewhere in the Google map here, just like a Pulsar 2, you will get an estimation of how many percent you will arrive with at that destination. So, you know, it ticks the right boxes. They do many things right. And I feel like uh, compared to the, the Volvo XC40 I tried, uh, over a year ago they have mo made many uh, good and the right improvements so I can't say that for other brands I've tested uh, some other brands maybe some German brands they never improve uh, the car I test again two years after they have not done anything to improve it but here you have new apps you have like the whatever it's called again the range assistant just like in the Polestar <clears throat> to help you understand what is pulling a lot of uh, power and then how you can also optimize the range there is a range optimizer with some kind of eco mode so they have done lots of good things to improve it um, what else should I say uh, the space here oh yeah compared to Polestar 2 I guess people who consider this car they will also consider Polestar 2 um, the Polestar 2 feels cramped not gonna lie the Polestar 2 is I mean it's not that small car but it feels cramped inside this one the XC oh, sorry, the, the, the C40 does not feel cramped you have plenty of headroom you have actually good space in the in the center console and everything always in the back seat you also have okay space a little bit limited space in the headroom for the rear passenger but I feel like I feel like it's still I mean it the the ride and the drive and the speed and the handling resembles Polestar but the Polestar of course is smaller it's a sedan so or I mean a lower at least so it rides better it's sportier but this one is more comfortable but also feels fairly sporty for an for a, for a CUV um, and when it comes to efficiency it seems like these cars they seem to be similar I haven't done a head-to-head -head comparison but maybe we are just uh, spending a little bit more juice than the Polestar but it's it's a good option if you consider Polestar versus this one but then you kind of need to know what do you want really but but when it comes to oh, 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 what the heck when it comes to other car oh, 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 why the driver is also holy shit okay just yeah, yeah let's, well, let's follow the, uh, and then they speed up of course but compared to other cars in the same market well like I mentioned you you can get Kia or Hyundai or Tesla or 
uh, oh yeah, yeah Mach-E also. You can get a lot of other cars for way lower price. Over 600K for this car is kind of a lot, you know? Uh, you can usually get those other cars with also all-wheel drive, plenty of range, maybe even more efficient. Uh, and also, uh, if you go for Ionic 5, it's also very quiet. Uh, and then for Tesla, you get the efficiency, you get even more range. Um, for maybe 500k only, or at least the other cars I mentioned, they are cheaper. So then, how do you justify buying this car? Well. It's just a matter of feeling, it's just like the beautiful uh, Polestar 2 ass we have uh, in front of us here. You know, if you, if you want a Volvo or a Polestar, uh, then this is this car is right down your alley. But if you just want the most bang for the bucks, then I think this is not the right car for you. Then you should go for some of the other options because the other cars. They, they usually get more range, they have uh, faster charging, they have more features, and they have lower price and all that. So, yeah, but still, you see, I, I still don't just butcher this car. I still love it. I've been spending almost one week with it. And I totally understand if you want to buy this car, okay? It, it might not be the most, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's, it might not be the most bang for the bucks or the most uh, uh, economical or, or the, 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 the car that makes the most sense to buy, but who cares? Uh, there are lots of cars out in the market today that is not the best bang for the buck, but people still buy them. And then that's what I also say about this car. So, um, and then when it comes to speed, by the way, I've been talking too much now, but okay, I just try to dish out all the most important uh, information, but you see, it's quite quick. It's it's fun to drive. It, it, it has that little delay though, hmm, I have to say. But the battery should be at okay temperature. There is no uh, icon. Yeah, also that's one, one nice touch, by the way. If the battery is cold, there will be an indication here. Uh, I don't remember it was, um, if it was, um, a crystal, a snow crystal or something, but there was something indicating that the battery was cold, but it's not here right now. So you see, those little things that makes the user experience for an EV driver better, so that you know what's going on, uh, other than just like, uh, you have no idea it's charging slow or the car feels sluggish, but you have no idea. But this one, it's there, yeah, it's there, okay. Let's see, um, let me go back here. I was gonna try to do a little launch, but you can just see now how fun it is to drive around here and just the sound it makes when it goes over bumps it just feels good it sounds good you know, the steering wheel the seats feels good okay let's hammer it what is a 50 so the fox man i was gonna do a little uh hmm, okay all right I, mean, I could just blur out the the, the sign or just uh, put something there so you don't know that there's another 50 zone here Where's the Baustelle? Okay, let's hammer it. Yeah, it, it has a nice pull. And even at this kind of speed, if you just floor it, zoop, it goes fast. And one small thing I like about Polestar and... Oh! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Schwer transport. Schwer transport. Polizei, Polizei. Okay, okay. There's something big here. Okay, are they going to go right or left or... What the heck is that? Okay, are they gonna hug the right lane? Oh, no, the left lane? Well, because then I can just uh, I can just uh, overtake on the right lane. <laughs> no, but anyway, okay, well, let's just let them pass. I'll just um, but uh, it's a it's a quick car. That's what I'm trying to say. So it, it's fun. It's that's one thing I noticed also when I drove the XC40 back in the days is that it's a fun car to drive. Uh, but. Of course, it had that SUV feeling, that boing, boing, ooh, ooh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the boat feeling. But this one doesn't have it. It's so nice and tight. I just, mm, mm, I love it. Wait, maybe I shouldn't overtake. Okay, okay, maybe I shouldn't overtake. Just stay here. I don't want to be pulled over by Polisai. Even though the Polisai is probably busy uh, leading the, the... Wait, what is this? This is the x P7. Give me that sexy thing. Oh, it's black also. I like it. I like it in black. Yeah. 
Oh, the ex bang is like, oh, yeah, I want to overtake. Oh, yeah, he want to hammer it. What, what, what? Okay, okay, yeah. I'm, okay. Where's the police car going? Oh, he's going in the front. He's going in the front. Oh, okay. He wants to. Oh, he wants to block. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. He blocks the lane. Okay. He doesn't want policy to over there. Okay. What's the fun, interesting um, observation? What they're doing? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So um, yeah. Let me see. I can show here. There's a wheel here. If I turn up the wheel, you see that we increase the the level of that one. It's some kind of ambient light. But you see. The, the ambient light here, the, the styling here is more pleasant. It, it's not like the Mercedes uh, uh, illuminated uh, air vents that just looks very flashy. Here it's just nice style, yeah. Everything is just well designed, Swedish design. Uh, okay, it's not perfect, but uh, I like overall the way the buttons here works when you when you set cruise control and these buttons are physical buttons and they have good uh, good feedback when you press them they are plastic though but uh, wait, 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 wait. they're plastic but they have good feedback and they just work and when you know when you learn the mu muscle memory where the buttons are then you just press it and you don't uh, miss press anything uh, unlike uh, some other German brand where you have haptic feedback and you always misclick on it and I don't remember it was a car recently I tried that had the touch haptic feedback on the steering wheel and I kept rubbing into it too and I accidentally increased and decreased the speed is it that that is kind of bad design but this one it just works yes so that's what I have to say about it um, I guess this video is supposed to be like a summer everything yeah I should mention also that how did this car do it in some of my tests but on the boxes it was around 20 what was it 21 22 boxes but it had remarkably good space uh, and also well, for this size but of course there are other cars that has more space like the the, the, the Korean cars and the, and the American cars I mentioned uh, but it still performs quite well in the space department it also in 1000 km challenge it was remarkably good compared to the XC40 the XC40 did it in 12 hours and 15 minutes this car did it in 10 hours and 35 minutes it was way way faster uh, okay I did it in in winter with the XC40 and this time it was spring but also did this in Sweden the whole like, maybe that was it we were driving in its home base that's why it performs so well you know? <laughs> no but um yeah and what else was it again the other test uh range test. okay when it comes to range by the way very important uh this car claim uh, volvo claims 435 i think it was over 430 kilometers of range uh, when I did my range test, which is not VLTP, remember it's not VLTP, but just to give you some indication, uh, at least when I was driving at constant speed, 90 kilometers per hour, which is not that fast, I could only get around 350 kilometers of range. No, no, actually, if I went really far, maybe 360, 270 kilometers of range, but, uh, and then it was springtime, so... <laughs> In summer, 400-ish, maybe, but 430, uh, no, probably not. So you just have to lower your expectation a little bit when it comes to range. Uh, Volvo was a bit uh, optimistic on that one, but uh, in the, on the other hand, the car has sufficient range. I mean, there are people who buy fat e-tron with a small battery, you know, the e-tron 50 which has only around 300 kilometers of range and they are still happy with the car and this one even beats the fat e-tron at least that one actually this one can even match the the fat e-tron 55 in terms of range so yeah uh, to me it's uh, sufficient so yeah i think i try to summarize everything uh i like this car i like it a lot really it's um uh, also wifey seems to like it uh, she she think the the suspension is uh, more whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. do you guys see that why the heck is it flickering um okay that's not good 
um, yeah, Volvo quality. Wait, did it disappear? It stopped flickering. Wait, what if I? Okay, that was that was maybe just a glitch, but okay. Um, but even wifey, wifey noticed that this car is is more quiet. I said, yeah, yeah, it is. You know, normally she doesn't she doesn't notice anything right <laughs> um and then she didn't complain too much when we went over bumpy roads uh i can show you by the way yeah i usually stop here but i can show you something if i go here this place here is always bumpy like here see Ooh. but the car kind of just floats over them you know without but without being that suv uh ride so that's that's what i love about this car it's great so now i'm just gonna go back here and park myself yeah you see here yeah that's that's great so i think that's gonna be it now you guys have seen it i i given you guys the the the, the summary and now I'm gonna shoot again in Thai <laughs> because this car actually the way I understand it uh, the XC40 was made in China the C40 is also made in China for the uh, Asian market so this car cost 2.6 million baht in Thailand no, no, 2.7 2.7 million baht which is actually okay price because in Thailand the, the BMW iX3, for example, cost 3.6 million baht, so 1 million baht more than this. And the Tesla Model 3 long range that we bought also cost 3.5 million baht, but that's great market. But just to give you an idea of uh, this car, it's, it's affordable for people in the middle upper class. So it's hopefully going to be uh, interesting to see how many get them there. So anyway, but this was in Norway. So I show you guys uh, what I think. So hopefully this was useful for you and uh, that's going to be it. Yes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.